Good morning. It's good to be with you here this morning. It's good to welcome you to the house of the Lord. I remember growing up many times, my parents would invite people over. And I'm looking out in this congregation and saying, many times there's probably at least this many people that came over to our house for dinner. It was kind of a come and go, but I think my brother and family would attest to me that that's, that's true. That it, it, it seems like an exaggeration, but uh, they would come in and, and whoever got done eating had to help wash the dishes and be ready for the next group of people that came through. We had a little thing beside our breezeway door. That's where every, all of all the friends came in. Nobody came to the front door unless they were, didn't know us. And everybody knew where that key was. I don't know why we locked our house. I think every, everybody, I grew up in Old South Chrysler when it was on South Chrysler. I think everybody there knew where the key was. Everybody in our family knew where the key was. They knew how to get in, and they were welcomed. There were sometimes we'd get up in the morning, there's somebody asleep on the couch that we didn't even know was coming. And they were coming. And uh, I also talk about, we have a golden retriever at our house, and anytime anybody comes over, she's so excited to see everybody. She just runs around and it's, it's everybody's turn to pet her. And that's kind of how excited I am to see you here today. Because I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to worship with you. I'm glad to be in a place to receive the blessings that the Lord has for us. And I desire that much for those that aren't here today. So I welcome you this morning to the house of the Lord, to the feast that he has prepared for you. For call to worship, I'm going to read from 3 Nephi chapter 5, verse 61 through 63. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I give unto you to be a light of this people. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Behold, do men light a candle and put it under a bushel? Nay, but on a candlestick, and, give it, and it giveth light to all that are in this house. Therefore, let your light so shine before this people, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Let us turn to hymn number 12 in the gold hymn book. And after singing this, we will have the invocation. Our dear Heavenly Father, uh, how blessed we are to uh, be here in this your house this morning. We're thankful uh, that we are here with those of our loved ones that uh, we can worship together. We ask at this time that you would uh, be here with us, that your spirit would, would uh, come over us, and that we would feel um, the love that you have for us. We ask as we would uh, continue to worship together throughout the morning, that you would uh, be with each one that has responsibility and be with our brother Greg as he would uh, share those things that uh, you have placed upon his heart and his mind, that um, those things would be uh, beneficial to us. Again, we thank you for this time we have together, and uh, we do pray all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. I read a short story. You'd like the whole story if you read it, but I'll give you the gist of it. A boy was uh, on his way to school, and he saw a baseball in the, under the bushes along the sidewalk. And he picked it up, and he figured, finders keepers. And some days later, he was walking home from school, and he heard a dog barking, and he looked, and the dog tied up in the yard was one that... He had lost, and he had despaired of finding it again, so he ran over and began petting the dog, 
boy came out of the house bigger than him and said, I found that dog. I'm keeping it. He didn't like the finder's keeper so well then. Point is, it's not a finder's keeper's world. It's a receiver's giver's world. I want to read to you from uh, second chapter of Alma. Second chapter, verses, parts of 32 and 36. Behold, are we not all beggars? Do we not all depend upon the same being, even God, for all the substance which we have? For both food and raiment, and for gold and for silver, and for all the riches which we have of every kind. Now if God who has created you, on whom you are dependent for your lives, and for all that you have and are, grants to you whatever you ask that is right in faith, believing that you shall receive, oh then, how had you ought to impart of the substance that you have one to another? Would you bow with me? Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for those blessings which you give to us daily, for those things that we have which we would not have except for your goodness. And as we consider those things we keep and those things we share, and as we consider what we can give as well as what we can receive, I pray that you would guide us, help us to choose wisely, help us to do those things which will further the building of your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. As the Lord speaks to our heart this morning, let's together consider a few, few of the powerful words of prophet Nephi as he spoke to the Lord in mighty prayer. Behold, my soul delighteth in the things of the Lord, and my heart pondereth continually upon the things which I have seen and heard. Nevertheless, the great goodness of the Lord in showing me his great and marvelous works. My heart exclaimeth, O wretched man that I am. Nevertheless, I know in whom I have trusted, the Holy One of Israel. Oh, then, if I have seen so great things, if the Lord in his condescension unto the children of men hath visited me with so much mercy, why should my heart weep and my soul linger in the valley of sorrow? Awake, my soul. No longer droop in sin. Rejoice, O my heart, and give place no more for the enemy of my soul. Rejoice, O my heart, and cry unto the Lord, and say, O Lord, I will praise thee forever. Yea, my soul will rejoice in thee my God, and the rock of my salvation. Father, we have heard the words of the prophet. It is a joy to gather with these many witnesses of Jesus Christ into this your house and before this table to remember our Lord Jesus, his love and his mercy for each of us, and we have gathered to, for that remembrance this morning and to partake of these holy emblems in remembrance of his body and his blood. And as we have gathered, our eyes are opened and we see the things of God and we see that we are wretched and, net, and yet, nevertheless, we remember in whom we have trusted, the Holy One of Israel. 
And so we come to partake this morning to awaken our soul that we would no longer droop in sin, O Lord, that our hearts would rejoice and give no more place for our rebellion and our pride, but that we would rejoice in our heart and that we would cry aloud unto thee as we do this moment. And we say unto thee, Lord, we will praise thee forever and ever, our Redeemer and the Rock. of our salvation. Thank you, O God, for this wonderful gift. And as we have asked and received the forgiveness of our sins, we stand in the perfection and the perfectness of your creation. And at this moment can dwell in the kingdom of God without spot. We praise your holy name, Father. Bless us as we reach forth to partake and to remember Christ, our Lord. In the name of Jesus, we do pray it. Amen. Good morning, saints. It's so good to be here with you and to worship together. It's been 18 days since uh, COVID hit our house, and we've been very blessed. And I know a lot of that is um, because of the prayers of the saints. And so we thank you for upholding us in prayer. And... Um, for checking in and for bringing meals, and it's just been a, a very big blessing to us. And so I thank you for that. And I thank the Lord for for that blessing in our in my family's life. You'll hear a cough drop in my mouth. Uh, I'm still fighting a, a, a cough um, that sounds like it, it could last for some time, and I apologize for that. But uh, trust that. Uh, Lord will continue to um, <clears throat> bless me as, as I as I desire to to serve Him this day. A few few weeks ago, I uh, had an opportunity to connect with a, a gentleman on Facebook. Um, don't normally do that. Um, his background is with the LDS Church, and so he was very interested in finding out more about the restoration. And so we shared several messages around that and. The topic then shifted to sharing about our personal journeys with the Lord in each of our lives and in our family's lives. It's been a blessing as I've, as I've had that opportunity. And as we were corresponding back and forth, I was reading one of his messages. When I read three of the words that he had typed, immediately the Spirit convicted me of the truth of those words. And these were words I've heard before, perhaps even spoken myself at various times in my life. And those words were simply, Jesus changes everything. What struck me was, I already believed that to be true. I wasn't sure why I was having that experience. I would venture to guess that if I were to go around to each of you in this room and, and on live stream that each of you would also confirm that you believe that Jesus changes everything. And so why did this experience happen? You know, I didn't have the purpose of that experience revealed to me. So I can't say with certainty, but I can say with certainty that those words are true. I can say with certainty that those words matter to each of us. And they need to matter to us more than they have. Today we partook of the sacrament. 
And one of the main purposes behind that act is a call to remembrance, to remember Jesus and to remember what he lovingly asks each one of us to do. So perhaps the Lord is wanting us to remember that simple truth in our life, that Jesus changes everything because his invitation is for personal growth, to always be seeking for a closer relationship with him than we have already experienced in our life. His presence in our life means we cannot stay the same. We cannot stay the same. Our relationship with him, our willingness to choose him over ourselves, always needs to be a central focus in our life. His invitation to come into our life and to change everything is always extended. But the acceptance of that is left to us as individuals each and every day. We can choose today to follow him, or we can choose our own journey, completely missing out on the opportunity and the blessing of having him change us for the better. Today we are given the same invitation that was extended many years ago to fishermen in Galilee. And that invitation was to set aside your nets and to come and to see. What nets are we asked to set aside? You know, our life is full of other interests, of everyday challenges. We're pulled on every side by distractions that entangle us. Time constraints, daily chores, work demands, fear, worldly pursuits, feelings of inadequacy, some of the many things that prevent us from developing a relationship with Christ in such a way that permits him to change us. If we are to truly be happy, if we are truly to live to our full potential, we must create a place for the Savior in our lives. We know the sacrifice will be worth it. We just have to actually make that sacrifice. The precious moments that will come as we cast aside our nets will allow us to discover something of much greater worth. And we will find opportunities that will allow us to come to know the Savior even more personally than we do now. Distractions, they come quickly in this busy world that we live in. With all the demands of our time, often we find ourselves putting our relationship with Christ on hold, waiting for a more convenient time to engage. Time is short. Time is short, brothers and sisters. There is still the opportunity to change our course at this very present moment. But as Bob Goff would say, all opportunities come with expiration dates. The time to act and to do is now. If we're going to come closer to Christ, we must be actively finding time to focus on him each and every day. Even if you can only start with five minutes. From 2 Nephi 11.48. We talk of Christ, we rejoice in Christ, we preach of Christ. That our children may know to what source they may look. Not only do we want our children to know what source they should look, we also need to remember for ourselves. Christ needs to become more to us than someone we read about or hear about or have a picture of on our wall. He needs to become our friend. He needs to become the center of our lives. Someone we long to talk to and someone we long to be with. And so you and I and everyone, we have an open invitation to know Christ better. I love Jesus. 
And I know it's not as deep and as abiding of a love as it should be. Throughout my life, I've experienced his hope. I've experienced his healing. And in those experiences that we each have of him, it causes within us a desire to testify of his goodness, to continue to seek for ways in which we can experience his love on a daily basis. Knowing Jesus on a personal level should be our greatest strength. Our relationship with him must never become stationary. We must seek to know Christ better than we know him now. We must remember him more often than we remember him now. We must serve him more diligently than we serve him now. We must allow Jesus to change us more than we have allowed him to. From 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man live in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It's important for us to remember that when we become a new creature, it does not mean that we are a perfect creature. Even if the changes sometimes seem small, don't become discouraged by that. Continue to nurture and to press forward and to take those steps toward him, both big and small. It will be a process that takes time and diligence. In 2007, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. In 2009, I underwent a a six-plus-hour surgery up at Mayo Clinic. One would never think anyone would ever want to have that kind of major surgery. But because of the severity of my illness and the 18 months prior to that operation, the things that I experienced leading up to that day prepared me to not only accept the fact that I needed surgery, but to welcome it with open arms, anticipating the joy I could experience to feel well again at some point after that. And so it might be hard for some of us to see now how we could ever have a sincere desire for us to welcome the type of change that is going to be required of us because it's going to cause us to become uncomfortable. We're to not hold anything back so that Jesus can change everything that needs to be changed. But I know, I know as we allow him in our life, to work in our life, as we prepare our hearts for those things ahead, I know we can get there. And not just get there, but be excited and long for that. Some of you may already be there. Some may be on the road to be there like I am. But my hope is that we are all taking steps toward that goal. The process may be long and difficult, but the next step is plain and simple. We must begin with where we are what we have, and walk with God in faith. And so let us remember there's always a process of preparation and experience and growth that we must first obtain before we can bear all that God desires to give us. I can personally testify that Jesus changes everything. And it's not because I have permitted him to change everything in my life. But because in those times in which I have allowed him entrance into my heart, he has changed everything that I have given him access to. Jesus will never force himself upon us. The door must be opened from within. So this morning, consider your own life. Every one of us need to examine our own commitment and our devotion to the Lord Jesus. What do you still need to give him access to in your own life? Where are you currently in your relationship with Christ and where would you like it to be? As I began to ponder in my life those times in which Christ changed everything, my mind 
went to several obstacles that I have faced and will continue to face that I'm sure each of you or someone you love has also struggled with or are struggling through now. We don't have enough time for me to share my testimonies of each of these. Be happy to do so if you uh, find me afterwards. Times of loneliness and emptiness. Times of complacency, discouragement and indifference. Times of anger, doubt, bitterness, resentment and hurt. Times of darkness and despair. Jesus changes everything, and only he has the power to change everything. But we have to allow him access to our heart and to give him entrance in, to do that change that only he can do. And that's hard for us to do. The message this morning is that if we have taken any of these things upon us, that the Son of Righteousness hath risen with healing in his wings, we do not have to continue to navigate this life with those things alone. Not one more minute. Perhaps you are wondering how you will make it through as you go through those times, perhaps even now. Remember, with the help of the Savior, we can always be certain of that. Turn to Him one day at a time, day by day. That's how He will get you through anything that you're going through. Each of us can find peace that comes through Jesus. Sometimes you just need a place to start, a reminder of how near he is. Sometimes we just need a little bit of hope. There is healing in his wings. Each of us will experience moments when we find ourselves desperately seeking the healing and the hope that only Christ can bring, maybe you or someone you love is in that place now. During difficult times in our life, sometimes it feels as though nobody could possibly understand what we're going through. But we are never completely alone. Jesus fully understands how we feel because he has felt it too. In Alma 5, 20 through 22, he shall go forth, suffering pains and afflictions and temptations of every kind. He will take upon him the pains and the sicknesses of his people, that his bowels may be filled with mercy, that he may know according to the flesh how to succor his people according to their infirmities. How beautiful. Jesus knows your pain, and he knows my pain, and he knows how to help us get through it. Jesus knows how to minister to your every need, and he is not a silent observer while we are enduring those things. Despite all the endeavor to, endeavors of darkness to surround and envelop the light of Christ, nothing can put that light out, and nothing ever will. And so we can fully trust that no matter what we're going through, that Jesus is always enough. In John 16, 33, In me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I love that Jesus doesn't simply say that we'll have trials and we'll have sorrow and then leaves it up to us to figure out. Instead, he promises peace, and he reminds us that he has overcome the world. And so no situation, however bad, is hopeless. 
heard a testimony at reunion several years ago that I had written down, and it speaks to that truth, that no situation, however bad, is hopeless. This is the testimony of a man named Archie. My understanding is that this experience came from Jim Doherty, and I've seen his name um, on the directory, I've seen it on the prayer list, and um, so I'm certain he would have more details to share on this. My understanding was that Brother Jim was a young man at the time of this testimony and was with his father, who was a missionary for the church. And they were appointed to a small town in Wisconsin. And shortly after they arrived, they began having cottage meetings with a family in town. And in this family was the father, Archie, the mother, Mary Beth, two sons, and a daughter. Archie, the father, he was the, the small-town mechanic, and he was what you would refer to as, as rough around the edges. He drank, he smoked, he's cursed, he, he lived a really hard life. And after several weeks of these cottage meetings, the entire family, except the girl who was still too young, they all decided to be baptized. And soon after, the Doherty men, they returned to Independence. They did so rejoicing in this family's decision to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. Shortly after that baptismal service, the oldest son, Archie Jr., was riding his bike in town when he was tragically struck and killed by a car driven by the town drunk. And his word got to Jim and his father of this tragedy. They went back to Wisconsin. As they came into the home, they just sat and spent time with the grieving family. But Dad Archie was crying. He let Jim and his father know how appreciative he was for sharing with his family about the gospel. And as they left, they drove down the driveway, and there at the edge of the road, a neighbor was standing and waving to them to talk with them. And so they pulled the car over, and the neighbor came over and he asked, Are you Archie's minister? He said, Yes, I am. The neighbor said, I just wanted to, you to know, I've known Archie a long time. And after this tragedy with Archie Jr. happened, I fully expected that he was going to go down to the jail where they were holding this man and killed his son. And he was going to take justice into his own hands. That's what I would have done. But instead... Archie actually went to the grocery store this morning and he bought a week's worth of food and he delivered it to the family of the man who killed his son because he knew that since that man was sitting in jail, his family wouldn't be able to buy groceries. Saints, when we choose to live a new life in Christ. We are filled with his presence. We are filled with his love. We have the testimony of Jesus Christ. We find freedom in him. Jesus changes everything. because of him that we can not only cease to do evil but we can also learn to do good in Matthew 11:30 Christ says learn of me for i am meek and lowly in heart
came across these words that Brother Oakman wrote. To the man of faith, the meanest of human creatures, has possibilities for divine sonship through the gospel. And what is more, the man of faith acts toward the mean man as if that mean man were already a son of God. He does not wait for grace to manifest itself in the life of the sinner. On our very best day, we all will still fall short in our efforts. Surrendering our hearts is not something that we can easily do on our own. Especially when we just try to rely on our own strength and our own power. But as we willingly choose to press forward in that, when we surrender to Him each and every day with full purpose of heart, we allow His love to enter into our hearts. And when we find His love and His strength filling our hearts, we can become transformed in and through Him. And Him alone. So let us choose to allow him into our hearts this day and each day after to continue to transform us. Moroni 7.53 Wherefore, my beloved brethren, pray unto the Father with all the energy of heart that ye may be filled with this love which he hath bestowed upon all who are true followers of his Son, Jesus Christ, that ye may become the sons of God That when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, that we may have this hope, that we may be purified, even as he is pure. Amen. The current condition of our heart can completely change from one prayer, from one chance. God can take that. His love can transform us, and it only takes a moment. It only takes a moment. Sometimes when we consider having a relationship with the Savior, we may feel that we are inadequate. We might question our worth worthiness and wonder if the Savior recognizes us for who we really are. Christ does, in fact, know who we are. Every detail. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And the Scriptures testify to each one of His creation of their great worth in His eyes. Jesus understands our every need, and he is always there, even when we doubt that. Jesus is calling us, each one, to prepare and to change us for his kingdom. It's not an easy thing for us, and it never has been. The reason the gospel has so much quality to it, so much value in it, is because of the price that you pay for it. And it's everything. When we have the gospel, nothing can take away that victory in Jesus Christ. That's what he promises. He promises us victory over sin, over death. Victory over those things in the world that would bind us down. Victory over those things that keep us from being all that we can be in his kingdom. Victory over all the obstacles and trials and burdens of this life. What more can God do than what he's already done? He's laid the foundation. He's provided the way. My testimony to you, brothers and sisters, is that Jesus Christ is always enough. He is worthy. He is worthy of our honor and our glory and our praise. He is worthy to be followed. He is worthy to be fully trusted and to surrender everything for. 
He is worthy to sit on the right hand of God, and he is worthy to receive our hearts that he desires us to give him. And he's calling each one of us to come and to follow him this day. Jesus changes everything. That message this morning might be simple. But it's one that we all need to hear over and over. We each have full access to a Savior who knows us, who loves us, who wants to walk with us throughout every part of our journey. And so let us lay aside every weight let us look unto Jesus. Last month, I had one of those days at work where when you clock out, you just feel completely drained. And as I came upstairs, I work at home in my basement. I, I was so drained, I, I just came into the, the kids' playroom and I just laid on the floor. The rest of my family hadn't noticed, but little Evie did. She came over, and she sat on my chest. Immediately, I felt that stress that pain and that, that just weight that I was feeling just melt away. And I was reminded of the promise that Jesus offers each one of us. That there's peace in his presence. Part of why that day was so hard for me was my teammates were all gone that day and something happened that uh, was very stressful. And I had people that were way above my pay grade uh, reaching out to me and uh, it was very stressful. When I came into work the next day, there's still a lot to do. I had about two or three hours of that that day before when I was by myself so the next day, a full eight hours of dealing with the same stuff. At that time, my teammates were back. And I wasn't carrying that weight alone. Perhaps there's those of you here today that maybe feel like you're alone. Maybe on live stream, sitting at home. Maybe even in a room full of people. You still feel alone. Maybe you feel unseen. You are not alone. Jesus knows you. He cares about you. He cares about your cares and your concerns. And he desires for you to share that weight with him. He's also given you the gift of a church family. And even though Jesus is the one that can change everything, there are those of us here in this room who can help bring you to his feet. And let him do his work. My cell phone, my email, they're in the directory. If you need somebody, you, know, you may not know me very well, since I'm new, and that's fine. Perhaps you find someone else here. Make sure you're using that gift and that blessing of a church family in your life to the way in which the Lord desires for you to have that blessing in your life. And so 
May the Lord bless each of you in, in these endeavors is my prayer. Our kind and gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we have come today to this place and we leave with the message that the, indeed Jesus changes everything. We, uh, we know that he is above us through all the things we do, but he does desire to walk beside us. We came this morning prepared to this service and we leave changed. Jesus changes everything, and we partook of the emblems that have been prepared. They were prepared for us. We did this, and we know that now we go forward, and we are changed. We renewed our baptismal covenant, and we sought perfection and forgiveness of the sins that we have, that we have brought with us, and we are changed. Jesus changes everything. As we go forth, Lord, to this world... There is much need. It is not our matter of if we are called to help people, but when and how. So may we remember the testimonies that were shared today. May we remember there are those like Archie and others that need us. And we, we go forth changed and better perfected. Thank you, Lord, for this day. And again, we ask this for a benediction upon this service that we are all blessed and we leave changed. And uh, we are humbled by thy almighty power. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.